Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, another day on rebuilding my bench press. And I'm not going to lie, today was tough. It was tough. Um, I still didn't get my 10 sets in. I went ahead and I stopped on the second rep on the eighth set. Um, and I'm not going to lie, this is getting tough. Doing this high volume triples is getting tough. And here's what I've said before. We have to master each weight. Uh, really, if you're going to use a training system like I'm using right now, you take as much time as is required to master any given weight. Now, today was a little harder than usual. Uh, part of it was because this is very, very early in the morning. Brittany had to do a photo shoot today, and I wanted to get in and film, and so we got up at 5 a.m., and we're in the gym at like 6 a.m. So I'm not quite used to training that early right now. Um, it wasn't a factor. Yeah, it's absolutely a factor is the fact that I hit volume PRs in my last two workouts probably a factor, some recovery issues? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because last Thursday I hit a volume PR, I got my 10 sets with a given weight on the strict press, and then I got to a volume PR and got to 10 sets on my front squats on Friday. Well, that front squat workout was tough, and honestly, I, I felt it all weekend long. I knew I hadn't fully recovered. And so, yeah, it's a cumulative effect. And I noticed as I got near my final set here, I really noticed my nervous system uh, starting to fatigue. Fortunately, my connective tissue is good. None of my connective tissue is sore. None of it hurts. But I noticed um, after about the seventh set, I was getting shaky. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Like when you deadlift heavy, how your hands get shaky afterwards. I noticed it today. And so here's what's gonna have to happen. Um, I'm gonna need to master this weight. I'm gonna need to just keep pounding away with 275 until I can get good pauses and get to 10 sets. I know that I haven't mastered this weight yet. Uh, I knocked 265 out in one workout. You know, I didn't even spend, I spent one week with 265 and I got straight to 10 sets and jumped straight to 275. All right, truth be told, truth be told, I probably should have done a five pound jump I probably should have went to 270 instead of 275 at that point uh, because that's as fast as my bench is going to come back up on rebuilding it after not doing it. This is basically where my strength is. What I'm doing now probably puts me at about a 320 to a 325 max on my close grip. All right, uh, that's acceptable. That's acceptable for now. Not in the long term. I want to get it a lot heavier than that. But I'm now at a point to where I'm going to see a normal progression pattern on my bench. In other words, I'm going to progress slowly like a normal advanced lifter now. Uh, that's just reality of it. And I'm going to have to live with that. And that's going to basically mean coming in and beating it out day after day, mastering this weight until this weight no longer feels heavy. Uh, because, you know, if you're trying to do multiple triples with a weight, it should never feel heavy on your first set. And mine did feel, it felt a little heavy on my first set today. Um, that's reality. That's reality. I'm now working with a weight that's appropriate for me, and it's a lot harder. And particularly to come in this early, it was tough. It was tough. And I knew that it, I was there when I, I racked it after two reps on that eighth set, and I went to do close grip. They're not close grip, I mean, I went to do skull crushers, and they were hard. They were really hard. Uh, my triceps were just done. My peripheral nervous system is done. And I'm almost worried tomorrow, because my lower back is still fatigued, I may not be able to deadlift tomorrow. I was gonna go back to conventional deadlift. If my lower back is not up to it, I will row, and I'll probably do it on camera tomorrow for you guys. Um, we'll see. I may have to pin lay row and skip deadlifts this week. And if I do, then that's okay, because here's the thing. This is a long-term training system I'm doing now. It works. I know it works. It's a tough way to train, but it gets results, and I'm going to have to just stick it out over time. And here's where you have to learn patience. When you're going to use a system like this to where you master a weight, you are going to have to take time where you have to deal with recovery. You're going to have weeks to where you're going to flounder. Sometimes you're going to have two or three weeks in a row to where you flounder. That's where the accessory work comes in. All right, what I'm going to have to do on this bench press, here's the strategy. All right, I'm increasing my weight next overhead press day because I hit a volume PR. That leaves me more room to do tricep work. If I build up my strength and strength stamina on my triceps, it will eventually 
catch my bench press up. As I improve at my overhead press, it will catch my closed grip bench press up. Uh, it'll all add up over time. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to just keep hammering away with 275 until it doesn't feel heavy anymore. Now, uh, what do I expect in the long term at this point? Uh, honestly, I will be happy at this point forward if I can just add five pounds to the bar every month. In other words, for my normal work sets, if I can get to say the 275 and only four workouts, get to 10 sets and then go to 280 and only take four workouts uh, to get there, that'll be acceptable. That will be acceptable because at that particular rate, in eight months, I'll be doing 315. Eight months. I should be able to do 315 for 10 sets of three. And if I can do that, uh, my bench is there, it's ready. Now, a lot of people say, man, five pounds a month, that's weak. Welcome to the world of being an advanced lifter. Welcome to the world of being an advanced lifter, not blasting a gram a test. <laughs> reality, guys, reality. That's how it works. And you know what? And when you, if you can add five pounds in an advanced lifter to three different exercises, barbell lifts every month, you should be ecstatic. And the only reason I'm getting away with even the possibility of that is because I've started squatting again and bench pressing again, exercises I haven't been doing. That's the only reason that's even a possibility. And at a certain point, I'm not going to be able to deadlift the way that I've been deadlifting. I'm probably only going to deadlift once every two weeks, and I may have to do pin lay rows for my deadlift day every other week so that I can focus more on this bench and squatting in order to get the training loads that I need in for them to continue to progress. And that's okay uh, because I can build my deadlift, training it for you know seven to ten sets once every two weeks. Um, I can actually build my deadlift that way as long as the accessories are there and I'm getting stronger on the other exercises. I can totally do that. Uh, in fact, I did mostly just lighter deadlift for six months and I came in and started repping over 500 again like it was nothing. I didn't touch over 405 on my deadlift. From the time I did that 500 for seven back for my me kind of celebrating turning 40, until the point where I uh, started training in here on camera again, I never, I didn't touch over 405 more than one time. One time. And went right back to doing over 500 for work sets. Uh, so not a big deal. Totally doable. And I can just do volume work on my deadlift once every two weeks and row in between and that'll be fine and that way I can really focus on my pressing strength and my squatting strength because those really need to come back up. Uh, those are really important to me right now. I realize I've let those lax and I'm going to bring them up. But as you guys saw here, now that we're back to that, yeah, I knew I was done. I knew I was done on that A set. I didn't want to get pinned again. I absolutely did not want to risk getting pinned two weeks in a row and it affecting my uh, recovery. I'll come in and do the accessory. And even today, I went to do these skull crushers and I do one work set and I stopped at like six reps. I'm like, I'm done. My nervous system's done. I'm going to have to make this volume up next week. I'm going to have to make the volume up on for as far as tricep work on my overhead press day since I'm increasing the weight. And then I'll come in and sort it out next time. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll get some of these tricep extensions in after my overhead press. And then next week, if the bar starts getting heavy, if it starts getting heavy on the seventh set of close grip, I'll stop at seven sets and I'll try to do three sets of skull crushers. Then I might have to use 275 for a fifth week. Um, that's okay. Master the weight before you progress. Master it. Now, as far as my skull crushers go here, I'm going to throw in a little side note. I've had a few people come in and say, oh, you're doing these wrong. Uh, the best way to do a skull crusher is your elbows pulled in and pull it, you know, lower the weight to your head. And I'm like, that's the exact sort of bullshit that causes all the inflammation and soreness in people's elbows out there. All these bodybuilders who talk about their elbows hurt when they press and they have to put these sleeves on. It's because they do their tricep extensions like that. That causes inflammation in your elbows. That's sheer stupidity. That's not knowing human biomechanics. It's stupidity. That's what it is. And I can't afford that, guys. I'm trying to build my bench press and my overhead press. I can't afford connective tissue 
uh, inflammation in my elbows. All right, that is not an option. I'm gonna have to do skull crushers in a way that doesn't cause that, that just makes my whole tricep stronger and carries over to my lifts. Not train like a silly bodybuilder, guys. That's how you get hurt and have nagging injuries and pain. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.